Have you ever wondered how far someone would go to pull off a scam involving one of the most iconic landmarks in American history? Imagine the audacity it takes to attempt to steal Graceland's, Elvis Presley's cherished home. Today, we delve into a tale that seems almost too wild to be true. It's a story filled with mystery, deception, and a surprising twist that leads us to a quiet trailer park in Missouri. Recent claims suggest that a seemingly unassuming grandmother might be behind a bold attempt to swindle Graceland from the Presley family. Join us as we uncover the details of this bizarre saga, explore the strange chain of events, and reveal the unexpected truth behind the Graceland scam. This is the tale of how an extraordinary piece of rock and roll history nearly slipped through the cracks in the shocking individual at the heart of it all. Six, the initial announcement. In a twist worthy of a Hollywood thriller, a mysterious company emerged from the shadows with a shocking announcement. Graceland, the beloved home of Elvis Presley, was on the verge of foreclosure. The company, calling itself Nasani Investments and Private Lending LLC, claimed that Lisa Marie Presley, Elvis's only daughter, had borrowed a staggering $3.8 million using Graceland as collateral. According to Nasani, this debt was now due and they were prepared to auction off the legendary estate to recoup their money. The news sent shockwaves through the Presley family and the legions of Elvis fans worldwide. But the Presley legacy was not about to be dismantled so easily. Riley Keow, Lisa Marie's daughter and the new overseer of Graceland sprang into action. She and her legal team wasted no time filing a lawsuit to block the sale and challenging the legitimacy of Nasani's claims. They presented evidence suggesting that the loan documents were fraudulent and that Lisa Marie had never borrowed money from this dubious company. The swift legal intervention managed to halt the sale, but the questions surrounding this bold attempt to seize Graceland were only beginning. Five, ownership of Graceland. Graceland, a symbol of rock and roll history in the cherished home of Elvis Presley, has a storied past that mirrors the twists and turns of a classic Southern ballad. Elvis purchased the 14-acre estate in 1957, and it became his sanctuary, a place where he could escape the frenzy of fame. After Elvis's untimely death in 1977, the ownership of Graceland passed to his only daughter, Lisa Marie Presley, when she turned 25 in 1993. Lisa Marie managed the estate with a deep sense of responsibility and pride, understanding the immense cultural significance it held. Over the years, Graceland saw its share of legal battles and ownership disputes. In 2005, Lisa Marie sold an 85% stake in Elvis Presley Enterprises, the company managing Elvis's image and business affairs, but she retained full ownership of Graceland itself. This move was strategic, ensuring the estate remained within the family while allowing for broader management of the Elvis brand. When Lisa Marie tragically passed away in 2023, her daughter Riley Keow became the new guardian of Graceland. Though initially contested by Lisa Marie's mother Priscilla, the dispute was amicably resolved out of court, solidifying Riley's position as the estate's rightful overseer. Today, Graceland remains under the stewardship of Riley Keow continuing to be a pilgrimage site for Elvis fans from around the globe. Riley, upholding the family legacy, ensures that the estate not only preserves the memory of Elvis, but also evolves to meet the interests of new generations. The estate's current status, firmly in the hands of the Presley family, stands as a testament to their enduring commitment to protecting and honoring Elvis's legacy amidst the tumultuous events that have threatened its sanctity. Four, the legal battle. The legal showdown between Riley Keough and Nasani Investments was as dramatic as it was necessary. Keough's attorneys moved swiftly, filing a lawsuit that accused Nasani of fabricating the entire loan transaction. The lawsuit detailed how Nasani Investments, an entity shrouded in mystery, claimed that Lisa Marie Presley had borrowed $3.8 million using Graceland as collateral. However, Riley's legal team argued that these claims were built on a foundation of lies. They provided evidence suggesting that the loan documents were riddled with inaccuracies and blatant forgeries of Lisa Marie's signature. Elvis Presley Enterprises backed Keow's assertions, releasing a statement 
that categorically denied any foreclosure sale. They emphasized that Graceland had never been at risk and that the Presley family had no dealings with Nossini Investments. This public declaration was crucial in maintaining the estate's reputation and assuring fans that Graceland remained secure. Meanwhile, media outlets, including Rolling Stone and the New York Times, sought to uncover more about Nasani. Their attempts to contact the company were met with silence or bounced emails, deepening the intrigue. The legal documents filed by Kiao's team painted a vivid picture of a shadowy operation trying to capitalize on the Presley legacy. The court filings described how Nasano had failed to present any legitimate evidence to support their claims, further suggesting that the entire scheme was a brazen attempt at fraud. As the court proceedings unfolded, it became clear that Riley Kia was not only fighting for her family's legacy, but also setting a precedent for protecting iconic landmarks from fraudulent claims. Three, the court proceedings the courtroom drama surrounding the Graceland scam was nothing short of a spectacle. As the case progressed, one glaring detail stood out, the complete and baffling absence of any representatives from Nossini Investments. Despite the gravity of the claims and the high-profile nature of the property involved, no one from the mysterious company showed up to defend their actions or present their case. This conspicuous absence only fueled suspicions about the legitimacy of Nasani in their audacious foreclosure attempt. In the midst of these proceedings, an unexpected twist arrived in the form of an email. The message, purportedly from Gregory Nasani, announced the withdrawal of all claims against Graceland. The email was riddled with grammatical errors and raised more questions than it answered. Gregory Nasani claimed to have no connection to the original contact named Kurt and stated that the company was withdrawing its claims with prejudice indicating a permanent and unchangeable decision. This sudden capitulation added another layer of mystery to the already convoluted case. As if the plot couldn't thicken any further, media outlets, including the New York Times and NBC News, received a bizarre response from a self-proclaimed dark web scammer based in Nigeria. The individual boasted about the ease of concocting such a scheme and ridiculed the authorities' efforts to untangle it. The scammer's brazen admission and mocking tone suggested a level of impunity and audacity that was both shocking and disturbing. Despite claiming responsibility, the scammer's connection to the actual court filings remained unclear. The fax documents originated from North America, adding yet another layer of confusion and intrigue. This bizarre confession seemed to close one chapter of the saga but it left many questions unanswered about the true masterminds behind the audacious attempt to steal Graceland. Two, NBC News investigation. In a stunning development, NBC News embarked on an in-depth investigation that peeled back the layers of the Graceland scam, revealing a suspect who was as unlikely as she was intriguing. Their investigative report pointed to a grandmother living in Branson, Missouri, as the potential mastermind behind the audacious attempt to seize Graceland. This revelation painted a picture of a woman who seemed worlds away from the high stakes realm of multi-million dollar fraud. The alleged scammer had a colorful and checkered past. According to NBC's findings, she had a criminal history stretching back decades, marked by a series of romance scams, forged checks, and bank frauds. Her rap sheet included stints in both state and federal prisons, with crimes amounting to hundreds of thousands of dollars. She had held various jobs over the years, including nursing assistant, EMT, hairdresser, and even an underwater welder. However, her primary occupation appeared to be running cons and intimidating witnesses, which she had honed into a dubious art form. When NBC tracked her down in a modest trailer park in Branson, the confrontation was as dramatic as it was revealing. The woman, whose demeanor hardly suggested the scope of her alleged criminal activities, vehemently denied any involvement in the Graceland scam. She claimed to be a victim of identity theft, asserting that she had no earthly idea what the NBC reporter was talking about. Her denial was immediate and forceful, but it did little to dispel the cloud of suspicion hanging over her. Shortly after the encounter, she issued a cease and desist order to NBC, accusing them of defamation, slander, and libel, and threatening legal action if they did not comply with her demands. 
Attempts by other media outlets to reach her were equally unsuccessful, leaving many to wonder whether this grandmother was indeed the cunning con artist behind one of the most audacious scams in recent memory or merely another pawn in a much larger scheme. One, current status and future of Graceland. Despite the whirlwind of drama and deception, Graceland remains firmly in the hands of the Presley family, a testament to their resilience and dedication to preserving Elvis's legacy. Riley Keough, Lisa Marie Presley's daughter, continues to oversee the estate, ensuring it remains a sanctuary for Elvis fans from around the world. The swift legal action taken by Keough and her team effectively thwarted the fraudulent foreclosure attempt, keeping Graceland out of the clutches of scammers and maintaining its status as a beloved historical landmark. As for the legal ramifications of this audacious scheme, both state and federal authorities have shown a keen interest in the case. The Tennessee Attorney General's office quickly assessed the situation, recognizing it as a matter best suited for federal investigation. While the FBI has remained tight-lipped, citing their standard policy of not commenting on ongoing investigations, there is little doubt that the federal law enforcement apparatus is actively probing the depths of this convoluted scam. The involvement of such high-level authorities underscores the seriousness of the crime and the determination to bring those responsible to justice. Looking ahead, the future of Graceland seems secure, but the impact of this scam lingers. This incident serves as a stark reminder of the lengths to which individuals will go to exploit and defraud. The Presley family's vigilance and swift action have safeguarded Graceland, but the episode has undoubtedly left its mark. Moving forward, there may be increased security and legal measures to protect the estate from similar threats. Moreover, this bizarre chapter in Graceland's history will likely become part of its storied narrative, a cautionary tale that adds yet another layer to the legend of Elvis Presley. The Presley family's continued stewardship ensures that Graceland remains not just a monument to the king of rock and roll, but also a symbol of resilience against those who would seek to tarnish its legacy. As we close this chapter on the bizarre and captivating saga of the Graceland scam, we invite you to reflect on the twists and turns that have unfolded. From the audacious foreclosure attempt by a shadowy company to the revelations of a possible Missouri grandmother behind the plot, this story has been a roller coaster of intrigue and deception. The Presley family's swift actions and unwavering commitment have kept Elvis's beloved home intact ensuring that Graceland remains a cherished landmark for generations to come. We would love to hear your thoughts and opinions on this incredible tale. Do you believe the Missouri grandmother was truly behind the scam? Or could there be more to the story? How do you think this incident will impact the future of Graceland and the legacy of Elvis Presley? Share your insights, theories, and reflections in the comments section below. Your engagement helps keep the conversation alive and honors the enduring legacy of the king of rock and roll. Thank you for joining us on this journey and stay tuned for more fascinating stories and updates. So what are your thoughts on this? Sound off in the comments section down below and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for celebrity news and updates every day.